What up, guys? Welcome to the Base Standards Podcast. And this week, uh, I got two guests up here, and one is a reoccurring guest, but we'd love to have him up here. We got Mr. Bingley Coombe, uh, Waifu Wars. What's up, bro? Hi. Yep, yep. Hi. Um, I'm a reoccurring uh, Weiss card. I'm like those <laughs> coin flip cards where, like, if you reveal a little too high, I go back to yeah. your hand. So, yeah, glad to be here. He's still single um, on uh, Christian Mingle. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh and then this week we have uh, a first timer. We have Greg, uh, one of uh, basically one of Bingley's buddies out in Florida. Uh, what's up, bro? Uh, doing pretty, nothing much, but doing pretty well. I'm excited to be on the podcast. So yeah. thank you for having me. All right, no problem, dude. I know you probably have uh, heard a bunch of people already uh, talking about how much they hate this podcast and all. So I'm sorry that you had to be up here, but <laughs> uh, the base damage podcast. I know the. <laughs> All, all 47 of us, uh, of, of the podcast at this point? Yeah, no, um, <laughs> it's whatever. Um, we have an anniversary coming up next month, so that'll be fun. Uh, we ended up recording, uh, we had initially recorded the, the one podcast where we came up with the name for it, that, uh, that'll end up getting posted, so it's about a year old now. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, y'all please check out Wife of Wars, uh, link in the description, um, but yeah, this week uh, we're we're doing a preemptive discussion on, uh, whereas I don't know but so much about like uh, JP format. These guys are the experts. I say experts, but these guys are the ones who know way more about it than I do. Um, going over the JP ban list that you said is going to drop on the twenty eighth mm-hmm. of yes. September. So or September. Uh, fuck, I'm like August. August. I can't even get my words straight today. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that eclipse messed me up, man. I don't know what the hell is wrong with me. Um, <laughs> it's like just messing with my brain. No. Um, but that's going to be coming up next week. So we'll probably still end up having another podcast going over uh, what actually did occur. But as far as going over, one, what got hit on the last band list. And we'll go ahead and um, go over that. Because I know, um, Greg, you said you had some, wanted to, uh, some stuff you wanted to talk about with that. Yes. Um, I have this convenient little picture I got up here right now we'll see how this looks um obviously going over the most like what I think is just kind of really funny to me the only thing that got taken off of the previous this is Japanese format not English in any way shape or form there is no current ban list for English but we will get to that later um Akaki Kai got taken off yeah so. Oh, I, just as a preface, I'd like to mm-hmm. say, like, usually with these, like, ban list changes, it's based off, like, JP, mm-hmm. like, tournament results, or yeah. just, like, based on, like, representation. So, just as, like, a for people who, are, like, don't really know how, like, the ban list works in yeah. JP. It turns out Bushra doesn't actually like to evaluate card quality and goes by the, like, population of a specific set, <laughs> which, yeah. uh, I mean, it could be a good or, good or a bad thing, but, like, who knows? <laughs> I mean, fair enough. I know uh, a couple other references as far as other ban lists from different card games. But we'll hit that in a, later on. Because um, I've seen, like, in Yu-Gi-Oh! and whatnot where they just make some crazy changes and it's like, what the what the heck? But anyway. Um, so in the previous one, uh, we had... That got added to it. We had one, two, three, four, five, six cards added to it from last time. Uh, Ren Shibuya from Idol Master. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the Hanakawas and a Shinobu from Monogatari. Uh, Z3. I, we do not have this set just yet, um, but I, I kind of want European Fleet Girls. Uh, and Clumsy Girl Inuduma from Kantai, and then the Haruhi event that states uh, fuck your climaxes. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember what the actual name of the thing was called. I know it's up here, but I can't read it. Uh, I just remember it states, oh, that's a nice climax combo you have there. It'd be a shame if something happened to it. Yeah, uh, event counter. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 it was an uh, event counter. Um, which they also had up for discussion at the time if they also wanted to put the level 3 Gilgamesh, um, well, the level 3 uh, King of Creation Archer because mm-hmm. it also mm-hmm. had a anti anti climax combo, or yeah, it, it was a climax combo, but it was anti climaxes. Anyway, uh, it had a combo for that, and I know that was up for dis- like discussion, but it never actually got put up there. 
Um, if I recall correctly, I believe one of the Asahinas from Haruhi that says pay one, and then opponent cannot play climaxes until the end of their turn. I think I was also up for debate. You're correct. Yeah, it was a level three. three. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which that's actually really cool. Like I know it's like extra stock. It's whatever. That's still that's not bad to me. Um, mm-hmm. as far as like cost of, they're all fairly cheap. Um, but yeah, other like that was like the the major changes. Um, obviously, you have the entire fucking row of Nizakoi stuff that they're just like no, <laughs> um, or like choose one of these three type things. Um. Make Marika great again. Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, Greg, I know you said you had some stuff you wanted to mention about it, so take it away, bro. All right. Uh oh. Is he still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Sorry oh, about that. Have my mic mm-hmm. muted? Oh, right, so basically, the the three sets that got hit recently were mm-hmm. CG by adding the uh, blue Akatsuki. Uh, mm-hmm. And then that's the Tutu Hanakawa stock charger, as well as the drop search type of effect. I wouldn't call it a drop search because you don't have to pay one, but mm-hmm. uh, it's similar in that regard. And then the uh, two level zero utility effects from Kantai. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, I feel like, uh, in a nutshell, as a whole, uh, the sets got significantly weakened as a result of the ban list. Uh, mm-hmm. They lost a lot of... Uh, like unique effects and things that would uh, set their decks apart from the rest. Uh, mm-hmm. And I guess we'll just um, uh, go about them one by one here. Uh, yeah. uh, introducing the Shibuya Rin to the uh, CG restriction list was uh, pretty pretty saddening because uh, before any ban list, when the set first came out, mm-hmm. uh, it had a lot of mill, it had a lot of plusing. Uh, and it basically just secured you doing the same thing every single game, as in, you know, getting your climaxes, setting up a wall, mm. um, searching a few times, and then eventually uh, your whole entire game plan is just to set up to have er- fat early play healers and then an explosive restand endgame. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, the addition of, like, Rin Shibuya also hurts, like, a lot of the other decks, like Red Blue, like Uzuki yeah. or whatever, like Pride of Krone, or just, like, Mono Blue, I guess. Uh, mm. CGs, some people played that. Yeah, because it was basically splashable into all the different builds, and I know one of the other cards up here, Power of Smile Ren, that was part of uh, Triad Primus. Yeah. So, I mean, you had like... The uh, yeah. You had like all the different builds that just everything of the CG put in blue one way, shape, or form, and so she was useful in all of those. So. Yeah, I think it's interesting because... Uh, a lot of times when uh, people look at the ban list, they always mm-hmm. look at it from a strictly tried Primus perspective. Mm-hmm. But uh, it also hurts a lot of the weaker decks from Idolmaster that arguably don't deserve to be on the ban list. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like a domino effect because a lot of cards are shared in similar CG lists. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like to piggyback off, like there's other cards currently like on the ban list with CG, uh, like like even Mirror still being on the pick pick choice and Kume being on the pick choice like those still hurt a lot of the consistency of the weak, quote unquote weaker decks as well mm-hmm. for CG as a set. I mean essentially what you're getting here is if you're playing Triad Primus you either have to choose between a utility level 0 or a finisher mm-hmm. and if you're playing basically every, anything else you have to pick one utility level 0 mm-hmm. uh, so I mean of course it goes without saying that uh if there was no restriction list, you would be playing every single level zero that was on the restriction list, just based on the pure amount of like utility it provides and how it basically just secures your game plan from that point onward. Mm-hmm. Based based on like general uh, reactions or like just what people did after like this whole ban list change, whatever is uh most people picked uh, Rin Shibuya just because they want to keep the consistency, and then there's like quote unquote other finishers uh, for CG. Like instead of running Power Smile Rin for the TB build, you could run this uh, three two red promo uh, Kyoko. I think where mm-hmm. it's just like I think you it's Burn Line or whatever. It's a it's the same effect from the Ram or a similar one. Yeah, because I mean, on play you top check three and add one, I believe, and yeah. then it's like. On reverse burn or on attack burn, I don't remember. It's like pay two discard one do something. I think it's like on attack, one. but like yeah, yeah it's uh, like obviously it's it's not like comparable to power smile run because like power yeah. smile run is just like a really good card, but yeah, uh, mm-hmm. just 
you can't really compare like you can't you can't like replace something like Ren Shibuya, the the utility of Kotsky. So that's why most people went for that. I mm-hmm. feel I feel. I mean, shoot, playing Kantai, I love my one Roman Akatsuki in there. That thing just, uh, it, it goes off like crazy. So I I understand the utility of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or like, yeah. I've yeah. seen some people also go Power of Smile, which I think both are respectable choices because they both provide really good things for the deck. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, it really just depends on what you're doing. But, I mean, just as a whole, CG got hurt pretty bad, which we are going to be saying for the next two sets <laughs> that have uh, that were on the restriction list. Yeah. So, uh, any last words on CG before you want to move on? I'm good on CG. Okay. Um, Bingley? For, like, I don't know, like, how they're going to, like, move on, like, coming towards August 28th, like, if CG is going to get, like, remain the same, or if it's going to be, like, re- like there's something to be removed, but I feel like it's it's like in a it's like a sh- shitty situation like in general for like CG players. So yeah. that's actually an interesting topic though. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the for ban list predictions, yeah, I think we should also consider what we think will come off if anything, as well mm-hmm. as things that might be added in. All right. Yeah. So, um, actually, staying on CG for just a second, then, uh, do you think any of these that are currently up there would be changed? Um, I pro I don't think so. Okay. Just because of the way Bushroad has been doing things lately, I think they're scared because of the numbers that uh, CG has shown in the past. Fair so enough. They don't want to like bring that up because like it, it takes a while for them to like really do anything like like because this was this was just added recently. Yeah. Honestly, just look so. at Nisei Koi. Yeah, yeah I know, right? <laughs> I mean, I think like. There's like this running gag where people are like saying, "Oh, when I wonder what's gonna be the next card that's gonna be on the CG ban list? Like, what's gonna be yeah. added to the CG restriction list?" So. Yeah, it's like gonna be like a uh, transient pulse run. <laughs> oh wait, no. <laughs> or try primus run, whatever it's called. Or whichever yeah. the yeah, no, um, no, we do not. It, it, <laughs> it, it'll it'll be crazy. So, no, uh, nothing else as far as being taken off. Um, is there anything from? Well, uh, he's a Freaking try a Primus Ran or whatever. No, um, I'm not certain. Like, what else? Because we have the first set over here, and that's all that I can really go off right now. Other than I know some of the cards from the Try Primus build, and that's about it. Um, anything that you think might be added um, from the current pool of cards, uh, Bingley? For JP? For right. uh, for JP for CG Gaia. Uh, not. Well, I feel like if Bushy would really wanted to kill CG, they would put they would add uh, Trancing Pulse Rin okay. as well to, to make it a pick one out of five. That would really kill the set. That would joke, be that, that card is splashable in like a lot of decks. So mm-hmm. I feel like if if they do that, they'll like hit the nail on the coffin for CG as a whole series. But I feel like uh, they, if anything, I feel like it'll probably remain the same. So going ahead, running, it's... going ahead, writing it down now. Power of Smile Rin. <laughs> So, <laughs> so if this happens, this will be interesting. Uh, <laughs> oh, you mean uh, transing, transing pulse went? Oh, was it transing pulse? Or, no, not power. Yeah. No, um, I'm yeah, sorry. Little... Yeah. So I was reading it as I was I was reading the card up there. So, eh, transing pulse. Yeah. It's either they add something like that, or they just leave it, just okay. leave it as it is right now, because it's still like this is still kind of like quote unquote pushy road fresh. So it's like I feel like they'll just keep it as it is because it's just to see how. Mm-hmm. Uh, JP players will react to it, I guess. Yeah, I think they're probably going to keep um, CG the same. Yeah. Uh, even though I probably don't think it deserves it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm one of the believers that thinks uh, every single set without a ban list or like with very minimal restrictions uh, won't be much better than the rest of the decks in the current format because that's just how White Horse is right now. It's a very like balanced game with the mm-hmm. uh, a lot of different, diverse, and unique decks. So, uh, so that's probably it for CG at this point. Um, speaking of balance, um, looking over to Monogatari series, are all of those oh, cards boy. from the second set? Yeah. Yes, these are all second series, which is third oh, booster. That damn. Okay, because. I, I know that's another, like you said, like another meme that gets thrown around, or as far as like a joke that gets thrown around, mm-hmm. is people. Where's my Monogatari season two on every single um, mm. 
post that Bushiroad ever makes. Um, this is where it is, and you know, <laughs> if if this stuff stays on the ban list, it's not really a thing. I mean, they, they'd have to make. I mean, they could make changes to it. I know, like um, going down to the Kantai one, Junio, we got over here, but they ended up they they gave it an errata on the effect. But I mean, so they could errata the stuff from from Monogatari, but. Eh? I, I feel don't like that would a lot of people. Yeah, I yeah. know. That's the thing. So. They haven't done a version E in a few years, so if they bring that stuff back, like... Shit, version E? The last thing they did for that was, what, Fairy Tale, or was that or was that something else? Uh, last version E was Nisekoi, I think? Was it Nisekoi? Okay. Yeah, Nisekoi 2015. Correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, I'm watching this, I, but I think... Yeah. That's the last version E they made. It's okay. I'll deal with the comments. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, right. um, on Monogari series, like as a mm-hmm. whole, for like the JP ban list, I feel like if you look at a lot of the cards, like that are in the like for out of the pick four, like mm-hmm. they're not that broken. The only thing that's really I would consider as kind of overpowered is the Mayoi level three, but like yeah. the other effects, like the two two Hana card, that's not broken. Like just a stock charge or whatever. Like you see that in other sets, and yeah, like it doesn't have any other effect as well. I it, that card's just literally on the ban list or restriction list, just because it's played a lot by JP players, so that's why it just gets on there. Yeah, What's no. interesting with this list... Sorry to interrupt you there, but... You're fine, dude. All right, so... Uh, JP players kind of adapted to things that were happening with the ban list. Uh, before any ban list for Mono Guitar, they were playing a sort of, uh, you know, player Shinobu climax combo, with a, which is just like Mikan, search a deck, uh, mm-hmm. on reverse... Uh, and then they played it with a 2-2 Shinobu change that had the top uh, deck scry ability uh, when mm-hmm. you took damage. Yeah. Uh, so that was the deck before. You just played, uh, you know, your Mayoi healers that uh, give stuff soul into Cancel Burn. Uh, you played this uh, middle schooler Shinobu that uh, you can, like, bounce your Akatsuki's back to hand. It was mm-hmm. just a really strong deck with a nice, like, sustainability because it had a lot of strong pieces that aren't really broken on their own but they work really well and have good synergy with each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then, of course, first ban list hit, my only healer, and then your bounce back engine uh, mm-hmm. went onto the ban list. So then people kind of got a bit creative and started switching over to the 2-2 Hanakawa. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they basically made that their quote-unquote advantage engine because, uh, let's be honest here, that card is not leaving the board. <laughs> um, or not in most cases, anyway. Yeah. So basically they just kind of made a compression-style deck where they would just like spam a bunch of healers at the end of the game, get some cancel burns. Uh, they would have good compression, and uh, it was an outlast deck, outlast deck basically. All right. Kind of outlast the opponent. Um, it depends depend, depend on the matchup, I guess. Like mm-hmm. sometimes, like cards can get over the like uh, Hanakawa. Yeah, if they play like fat early drops, like as previously mentioned, Trancing yeah. Pulse Friend, uh, <laughs> <it's> fat. <laughs> uh, but. As for, like, things that could get removed, I honestly am not opposed to removing the Chernobyl Drop Search because it is the only, uh... Like, it's a good card, but it's the only thing that doesn't seem, like, in line with the rest of the ban list. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, of course, your 3-2 healer is a finisher and a healer tacked on. Uh, your bounce back is plussing, quote-unquote, in some ways. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2 Hanakawa is the most convenient and, I guess, value stock charger in the game. Um, except for like maybe like Shizuru, or um, Ellie from Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I mean the Shinobu, it's just like it's a global five. It can search for stuff. Like it's nothing like really like robust or big. So that's why I'd say it would get removed if Bushiro did anything to Monogatari. What was the uh, what was the search condition? Or as far as uh, it just grab any stranger? So what? if you have experience four or more, mm-hmm. so you have to play to level two. Oh, wow. uh, on on play, you have to you just discard any card and then search for a strange character. Oh wow! So, I mean, I know they did the experience thing anyway, so that's not like they weren't going to get that. I mean, yeah, it's not so. a big deal. It's a yeah. it's a drop search that's a global five, and you don't have to pay a stock, but in return you have to play it at level two or higher. Yeah, that yeah, that's that's not that bad. That's okay. It's pretty good. As far as like, I, I don't yeah, I don't, I don't really see that. Like being something that needs to permanently stay up there, either. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and any other stuff that you would think in Monogatari that would even, even remotely be close to being put up here? Uh, I don't think so. Because the main thing is that 
uh, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm not sure if Binley's been keeping up to date with like tournament representation. But as far as I'm aware, I don't think CG and Monogatari have been putting up as big of numbers as they have been in the past. I think mm-hmm. Japan kind of uh, let that go, and they're now moving on to other sets too. Yeah, uh, use because Bushiro, you know, hit it on the hammer a few times. Every now and then, they just like, like to do some, that. like Monica guitar stuff, but it's not like overly represented as it, as it was before. Mm-hmm. But yeah, oh. yeah, I agree with uh, Greg that like JP players are starting to shift towards more like other sets, just because like there's not there's not restrictions on them. Like and they definitely just didn't modern, shift yeah, to more modern. before. Like first ban list, they're just like, oh, that's just it's an obstacle thrown on our way. We can move around it. Yeah. And it's just kept on playing the same decks. Yeah. Now it's like, oh, wow. Um <laughs> shit. What am I supposed to do with this deck now? Yeah. <laughs> like that's how it feels. Especially like the way Japan uh what was it, for like a month or two a while back was like pumping out a new set each week. So it's like they, there's a whole bunch of other stuff they had options for as to what was good or bad at that point. I don't know, but it is like you said, there's just so many other new sets. They're just like, now nah, I'm just gonna migrate over here. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that'll be it for Monogatari, unless anyone else has any other comments. I don't think good. any other comments. Yep. Okay. Um, Kantai, as previously mentioned before, Junio got the. Arado, where it was like she gave all other fleet girls a soul. Um, got that changed up. The Hatsukaze, uh, anti salvage, the Hibiki heel tax was already up there. And everybody knows how aggravating that is as far as you can choose one of those. Um, the junior straight band. Um, so Z3 and Inaduma. Um, as you mentioned before, with like Ren being the whole winner moment Akatsuki thing, I'm actually kind of surprised. I know I'm this. I, I know this is coming from an English player, but in that same regard, uh, winner moment Akatsuki itself not being up here in some way, shape, or form. Um, uh, just a weird little thing. I don't know. I think it's mainly uh, like the the main idea or the main game plan that the deck is trying to achieve. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Bushiro wanted to hit Tri Primus's consistency in a way where they can't mill and grab things from the top four cards of the deck. Yeah. And in a sense, for Kansai Collection, they had so many different things they wanted to uh, limit you to just one of them. So, of course, Z3 is a really good support that allows you to search on level up if you want mm-hmm. to. Um, uh, Inazuma is very comparable to Miria, or like the Riki effect, uh, but it happens on death instead. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, of course, the other things still on the ban list are anti-heal, anti-salvage. That's nothing mm-hmm. new. But yeah. I think it should be noted, uh, any English player or Japanese player knows the insane amount of value those two cards bring you, especially uh, Hibiki, because it just it gives mm-hmm. you a plus. It gives you your anti-heal effect. It kind of compresses you or makes you go a break even on compression because you send it to memory. It's just, like, mm-hmm. it's really solid. So it's many amazing. good effects on one card. Yeah. Well, that's another thing why I said the winner moment of Kotsky, because that ties into that. Like, oftentimes when I'll play the combo, um, if I don't have, like, a Verney or whatever, or I, I'll get the winner of Kotsky, pitch a Verney for it to set up the Hibiki play or whatever. So, oftentimes on the choose, as far as the choose part of that, I, I, if I were playing JP, I'd probably end up picking the Hibiki to run with that, but that's whatever. Um, Granted, uh, I, I also don't know how JP is set up more than anything. Right now, but, yeah, mm-hmm. right now, most people who play a JP Kontai, they pick uh, Z3, just because mm-hmm. it's, like, a overall good... Su- like, you know, it's not great. only does it, like, search uh, for a character on level up, but it also works with this engine where you can... It's like you tap and you get Stalk, someone... Stalk. Yeah, power, and then blind stalking, and then mm-hmm. there's other interactions with your cards as well, so... Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of the things in this set... Uh, I think it's kind of like pick and choose what you want because if you play Z3, you're going to have a hard time plusing at level 0, mm-hmm. which is what yeah. made the, the dex engine sustainable in the first place because, like, oh, you can just play your Inazuma down, you can plus, it's not really a big investment to field. But now every single thing that you play is an investment to your hand and an investment to your field because it's eventually getting wiped because none of your cards have particularly, like, high power. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's like pick and choose. Oh, do you want anti-salvage? Do you want anti-heal? Do you want a good support that pumps a bunch of power and can give you your Maya, uh, the ability to blind stock? Or do you want a plus at level zero? Mm-hmm. I think that was the mentality that was brought to this 
uh, ban list. And that's mainly why I think Akagi Kai was left off the ban list, because it was a mainly a discussion about level zero game and how you wanted to play it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, Akagi Kai was, has nothing to do with level zero game. And in European Fleet, the third booster for Kansai added a slew of new finishers mm-hmm. that are unique and do different effects, so maybe they didn't deem Akagi Kai more potent or as necessary because there are a bunch of new finishers in Kansai 3. Mm-hmm. Even when um, Akagi was in, like, the pick one out of three, like, most people still picked the Hibiki because, right, like, if you people think, like, Akagi's, like, this really, like, scary card or whatever, and it is, it is kind of good, but then, like, it's not as, like, scary as it, as it was before, like, it decompresses you, like, it's weird because, like, Kantai, like, you want to be, like, com- you want to, like, build up stock and kind of be, like, compressed or whatever, but once you mm-hmm. play down Akagi, all your clean stock is, like, gone or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think Akagi Kai is still a good card. Like, you can definitely oh, yeah. build decks around it still. Uh, it's just, like, there's a few, like, little things that are annoying when talking about Akagi Kai. Like, if you want to play two or so compasses and then play level three on the next turn, you cannot do that because you're getting three stock. Play two compasses, you're down one stock. Uh, oh. It's just, like, there's a lot of other finishers that do similar things. Like Kashima, for example, that just gets power, and then you can burn on reverse, and it also draws two to just one. And, and it's fabulous. also, like, the meta game right now is just, like, a lot of people still run, like, uh, sack counters or just, like, their cards might just be naturally bigger when they back up, so Akagi might not be as, like, potent to, like, mm-hmm. lock it or whatever That's as a consideration. Possible. But I still... Isn't Akagi kind of, like, huge because it gives, like, global 1k? I uh, mean, if, multiple, it, if you get multiples yeah, off. Yeah, it gives yeah. a global 1k to... I don't know if it was, like, to every card on the stage. It didn't matter either way. But yeah, for like each of them, it gave a buff. So it was like, oh wow. Mm-hmm. Um, until the end no, of your opponent's next turn. It's like 14-5, like triple Akagi and like mm-hmm. two global fives or whatever. Like, yeah. When so, I played English Kantai. Yeah. So it was, As it stands, I think the main appeal of Kantai is having access to all of these different finishers and then customizing your level three game plan to meet the amount of damage that you want to do because we have a restander, a clock kick that's not tied to a gold bar, I'm not sure what the ship girl's name is, but there is one. Uh, and then I mentioned the restander. There's Musashi, of course. Yeah, there's Musashi. the Kashima that burns. And then, of course, you have Congo, which burns and heals. You know, so you it, have a bunch of level three. Plans. I think it was Bismarck. I could be wrong on that. For the clock kick, wasn't it? Was it Bismarck or oh, was it a? There's a um, set one card. It's a set one card where it's just like it gets. Uh, Hugo Ka- Hugo Kai. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I remember like, now. Hey, one just card one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, just remember that now. I'm, I'm, I was still thinking of the European fleet when you said that, and I'm like, <laughs> wait, what? No, okay, yeah, no, yeah. I remember Yuga Kai because that was my Akagi Kai before I could afford Akagi Kai. <laughs> Which ironically is mm-hmm. still played yeah. in a JP list because they don't want to play the gold bar for Akagi Kai. That's understandable. I don't, I don't blame them. Um, oh, uh, ironically, well, like this isn't the first time that um clumsy girl in Azuma has been on the ban list as well. Like, like, in yeah, the, like. As it goes, it was on the list with Musashi. Yeah, because it was your your grab Shimakaze card and whatnot. But yeah, yeah, no, I remember. I was gonna, I was gonna say that. I was like, wait, th- this is this is coming back. <laughs> yeah, but um, overall, I think like with the recent like uh, ban list, I feel like this it really hurt Kantai, like just with its consistency. And like, I feel like Kantai is not like this. It's not one of the top decks in JP land anymore. It's more of like an off meta deck now I feel like just because I feel like a lot of people are picking Z3 and like Hibiki like Hibiki is a good card like anti heal is like pretty strong but people are mm-hmm. are picking Z3 instead so it's not like as oppressive as it was yeah. as it is in like English because they have anti salvage and anti heal and yeah. just putting on pressure with Akagi and Musashi so it's not oh. as like scary as it used to be and Z3 didn't have a restriction on what it could grab right like not a like uh, Inaduma had the uh, you could grab a level 1 or lower um, Z3's just pay to grab anything. Anything? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, no, that's sh- Ship girl. Yeah. Battle fleet, whatever they're called. Battle fleet. Yeah, fleet girl. But, Freaking uh, uh, fleet in the deep sea. That's what they changed Abyssals to. <laughs> like, I'm like, what the heck? Sorry. Go ahead. Production problems, regardless. <laughs> um, quote, unquote. <laughs> quote, unquote. Uh, but yeah, as for things that are getting removed, like... Bushiro probably won't do anything to it. Nah. Unfortunately. I can't. Like, see even it. even though, like, 
I don't think it's really needed. Like, I don't think a lot of these restrictions are needed, but, I mean, I guess that's a topic for another day, but we're just talking about as is. Yeah. Uh, especially the the ones that were just put up there are obviously not, probably not going to be coming off anytime soon. Um, mm-hmm. Anything else currently in the set uh, for any of the Contai sets do you think would be put in here? Well, I'm going to go with a no, like the rest of the sets. No. All right. I think they've I think they've hit it enough to where they're comfortable mm-hmm. that it won't see like a lot of play or it won't be like a top deck. Yeah, uh, which is which is like their main goal. Like that's what they wanted to achieve here, and they've done that. They've no longer made Kentai like uh, the mm-hmm. toppest of the meta. So, I mean, they can view it as mission accomplished. We players are very sad, mm-hmm. but I guess it is how it is. Yeah. Um. Any other uh, comments on Kantai Collection, Billy? Um, I feel like if JP players still play it more, they're just going to be asking for it. <laughs> like, just asking like asking for it to get hit, like, even more. I don't know. Like, gotcha. Because I know some... I, I'm pretty sure, like, JP players still play Kantai just because it's, like, Kantai. Yeah. Um, it's Kankole. Yeah. <laughs> Kankole. <laughs> yeah, they have to represent their JP pride. But, um... I feel like, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to, like... Yeah. Could put they're the not accent do... on it there. <laughs> yeah. JP, yeah. yeah. JP, KC is, like, All really right. depressing. All right. Um, I think it's still a good deck. It's just, like, not as good as it used to be. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, the only other real big change from last time was the Asakura... Is, it Asa... is Asakura her name? I can't remember it. Talking about the Harhi thing? The Harhi event, yeah. yeah I've, I've never watched Harhi, unfortunately, yeah. so I would not. I just remember <laughs> she got jacked up by Nagato. Um, um, the swing is still up there. Um, <laughs> the swing will not be freed. Uh, yeah. Uh, nah, this World of Fate of Colors is probably never going to come off. Um, yeah, just based on principle, because you yeah. can just loop it. Yeah. Now, um, with... The event that they get, that they took off from Harhi as well was basically just I know we mentioned before was the keep people from stopping the climax combos, um, like a lot of the climax combos that would stop at that point were stuff like the Akagi Kai that was like um, on reverse if the climax is here do the clock shoot or whatever, um, like the the Yami and Arl things that do a bunch of cancel brands yeah you'd be able to stop like the especially the triple one of it um it's on attack so you like okay you do with one you see swing with one with the yami you'd still get one off sure but yeah the other two are sitting up there like well fuck <laughs> uh, i think you prevent all three yamis because they had you attack they trigger you use the counter, you remove the climax um, you either take or cancel yeah, your damage and then you don't yeah. take cancel brands no yeah, the yeah, yami's still- it, it gives them the instant. Yeah, you know, it's on decoration. It would give them the instance of it, and then the attack continues through. That's right. Is that the effect? So on attack, I if they have so. the climax, yeah, I think, I think um, you give it to itself, and then another character. So I have, I have it like a foot away from me. <laughs> Let me double check just to be on the safe side. Um, when this attacks, if gentle time is in your climax area, give the cancel burn. The the instances of the cancel burn. So okay. so give it yeah, to itself yeah. and another character. So yeah, uh, if they knock, if they knock that climax off, you still get one, uh, two cancel burns total. I think. Yeah, at that uh, point, in that and, case. and that stops a lot of what that deck can do in general. It's like, oh wow, I was gonna kill you. Mm-hmm. Damn. Okay. Do you want to <laughs> talk <laughs> about? It's God. like it's depressing, bro. Like, like <laughs> they hit. They the only re- reason why they hit this card is just like the Bushy Roads mentality of the game of like how oh okay. Like, we want to enforce Climax combos to happen, so let's just hit a card from, like, an ir- irrelevant set that's not doing anything in, like, JP land at all, so... Yeah. I think it's interesting, though, because uh, we were talking before the podcast started about the different things that were considered to be on the ban list, and mm-hmm. I think that this Haruhi event is probably the correct thing to hit, if anything, uh, because uh, this is more of a reactive card than a proactive card. Mm-hmm. Uh, because the Gilgamesh that heals with the 2k1 climax combo, as well as the uh, Mikuru Asahina that minus one soul, and then you can pay one, and then your opponent can't play climaxes the next turn. Those mm-hmm. are more like proactive cards, so you're anticipating them to play the climax combo next mm-hmm. turn. 
uh, for like level three climax combo decks, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but this one you can just kind of like keep in your hand, and then if there's ever like an annoying climax that you want to get rid of, you can just play it and then pop it up. Yeah. And of course, there's different implications for that. You can prevent as much soul damage uh, if you get rid of that climax, and of course, yeah. you can prevent climax combos. Yeah, so. that's understandable. As far as if you throw out the other ones, they're just going to be like, well, I can't use these cards now anyway. You know, you use them for yeah. other resources or whatever, or discard fodder or whatever. Whereas, like you say with this, um, the second they go to attack here, you pull the meme of, gotcha, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> so. uh, also important to note is that if you want to knock climaxes out for soul damage, uh, it mainly works for 1k ones, because uh, 2k ones and split 2k ones are uh, on activation, so they oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. power. Yeah, those 2k ones are hotter, so it hurts the one continuous. Yeah. yeah. So it's not like 1k ones. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah. stock souls give the soul on activation, so that yeah. doesn't count either. So, I mean, that that's a thing. That's an interaction that exists that probably won't happen because no one plays hard, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah. Understandable. Um... That's as far as the recent change. Oh, I was, didn't mean to cut you off, Bentley. Any, any other comments you wanted to throw in? Oh, I, I wanted to say, like, um, some cards, I feel like, on the ban list, like, in general right now, like, are not, like, like shouldn't be, like, I feel like they don't have to be on it. Like, for example, the Shining Force, like, the Changing Clothes Cyril. That, mm -hmm. The reason why that card's on the ban list is because uh, in previous years, like, uh, people were like sl slow play with that card, or whatever. And I feel like right now, with how Weiss is, it's more like a fast paced game. So even like people tried to slow play, like I feel like, 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 and especially Shining Force, like, sh like Shining Force is not like a meta set. Mm -hmm. So I don't get why it's on the ban list. If anything, it would help them, and that gets off the ban list, I guess. I don't know. Mm -hmm. what, like, do you think? Do you think Shining like, will be opinion. on the ban list if it was unrestricted? Or, I'm sorry. Do you think it'll be in the deck? What am I talking about? <laughs> um, I mean, you both sh like you could splash cards from um, both shining sets. I mean, you, I don't think you would just because like the whole traits like doesn't uh, like the new shining force whatever like they work off of, like music or dragon trait or something like that. So it'd be weird splashing it in because I don't know what the traits are for Cyro mm -hmm. changing close Cyro. I mean, you could splash it, but. I did, I'm just saying, like, card, like, the card right now on the list is like unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Like, right. just needs to be on the list. Understandable. Yeah, I think a lot of the older uh, restrictions don't really need to be on here. Of course, uh, Nisekoi has been talked about. Free Nisekoi, twenty <laughs> enter in X year, because yeah. we've been talking about it for like three years now. Everyone's uh, saying make Marika great again. <laughs> yeah. So and then uh, Decapo, I think is an interesting balance, but I don't think it's really needed mm -hmm. because uh, even if you would play, well, basically, uh, Beanley knows this, but I'm not sure if you know it. Uh, two two heal two event and then one one alarm at the end of the turn. If this card is at the top of your clock, uh, you just get to heal it off. So uh, it's yeah, like, level two or higher. It's like attrition healing cards. Uh, but those two cards go in completely different decks. Uh, the 1-1 one, one Anzin Swimsuit goes into the Magic deck, and then the 2-2 two, two Xylophone event that just heals two either goes into Newspaper or Student Council. So, yeah. very so, distinct different decks in Decapo. So it's Decapo. not like you're going to mix it anyway. Uh, I think there's an option to, but uh, I don't think you have enough slots just for mindless yeah. healing in the deck. Right. Decapo's pretty tight in their deck space, when I, I, I realize, when it comes to like deck building. Mm -hmm. Alright. Um, I didn't even know that as far as uh, how those decks were split off at that point. Um, it's a very trait-focused deck, or set, so there's like five different traits that are like competent and you can build off of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but uh, for Nisekoi, like, I, I agree that like right now like the, <laughs> the series as a whole is very like underpowered. Like, you can tell how much like it's been power crept from, like, since Weiss has progressed as the game. Like, I don't know what they would, like, if they did change cards, like, from the Nisekoi restriction list, like, I don't know what they would take out. I but think they I would just like take out the pendants, so then you get a choice between the Bonder or the Free Fresh. Yeah, sure, that makes sense. I'd probably uh, choose but, the Free Fresh. 
There's some something like that. But all of the cards on the restriction list are really good, obviously, except mm-hmm. for the pedants because you have to play them because they're written in the name or in the card text of other cards. So yeah, yeah. Some people um, are like speculate, or some people are saying like um, maybe bring Marker at the two. Honestly, I'd be fine with Marker as that two, just because like it is like kind of scary, but then like. I'm fine. Like, I don't think it's o- as oppressive like two compared to four. Yeah, I think I probably want to run the the numbers on two Marka, but I don't think it's much different than a lot of the powerful end games that we have nowadays. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I mean, talk about like what are like textbook examples of like big end game finishers that are good. You have like rabbits, which does a bunch of ones. I mean, like even against like uh, say like guardians, like Marka won't be able to reverse gar- against like Shizuru. Mm-hmm. For sure. So, so if anything, she just gets on attack burn one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Which uh, so I know in a lot of the uh, locals around, like, like around where I'm at, um, well, one of the card shops in Raleigh, uh, that do, they do mixed. Um, one of the decks that I always heard about people talking about it there was uh, was rabbits being rampant up there. So I always had wondered why rabbits hadn't really been like touched, but so much for. Uh, like a JP ban list or whatever. So, uh, is is that is is rabbits one of the one of the major ones as far as in JP right now? Um, yeah, it's a lot. lot a lot of people are speculating that rabbits is gonna get hit with this coming ban list just because like how it's been the most represented, uh, one of the most represented sets of uh, the tourney JP tourney result. Which is why I sold my rabbit sack like a month ago. <laughs> this is making the top. The top contenders are Rabbits and um, Rewrite. Um, I don't think P5 is going to get hit just because, like, mm-hmm. there's nothing really to hit from P5. Like, it's a really balanced set. Like, it's not overpowering or anything. It's, like, fine. Like, it's not scary or whatever, so. I mean, the, the what was it, Advance Notice? I know it had, like, multiple versions of, like, how uh, Promise Pendant has different versions of. Um, even then, none of those are really too terribly overpowered. Um, I mean, the yeah. Joker finisher was still pretty good, but I know some people were saying that even that was kind of eh. Um, yeah, it's not a reliable finisher. Yeah, like it was like reading it is like wow, this effect's really cool if you can get it to go off, and you know, eh. But uh, even then, um, is I, I'm kind of in agreement with you on that one. Even going over it, when we initially had gone over it in a set discussion, I know two of the other guys who are with us in the podcast for that um, were very much against the set and just kind of going "fuck this," you know, just just straight up hating on it. And we're just like, "dude, it's 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 not that bad." But they were they were very much against it. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. They're yeah. talking about like in an English meta game. I don't think Persona Five is that much like more it's powerful true. than that other stuff. Um, around. If if Bushiro did do like just a promise pendants uh, treatment to P Five, like most most people are still going to pick the one zero yellow advance notice because that's the I think that's the best advance notice okay. of all and with the most played just because it's a pre Akatsuki. Uh, well not it's not Akatsuki, it's a uh, Chihaya's camera that's bondable and then you get to potentially bounce a a cost zero or less in the front row. That's that's what makes P five really good is being able to like bounce and then getting your uh direct attack that sticks being able to like Extra get some pluses there. off of that. And I'm then yeah, be honest here the salvage. I'm gonna be honest here, I only know one advance notice because it's the only one that's played in any deck. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but advanced notice is the best one without mm-hmm. a doubt. Without me even knowing what the other ones do, because mm-hmm. just like no one plays the other one. Yeah, as far as the other sets that JP has gotten as of recent, I say, I say recent, but I'm even gonna go as far back as Re Zero. Um, between like Re Zero and kind of forward from there, between Konosuba. Uh, Vivid Strike, hell, even Star Wars. Any of those? Do you think mm-hmm. are, have had like? Uh, do you think have had that high of a representation in? Yeah, in right. Game? Which Rewrite has, Rewrite has a lot of representation. So yeah. anything Re-Zero from Rewrite? also? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, cause... and Rezero too. But I feel like there's, I feel like there's you can't. It's kind of hard to hit Rezero because it's like a, 
Like it, it is a pretty good set. I just don't know what you would hit. Oh, well, it's like, hard. I feel like if you hit something, then it, like it kind of would hurt the set a lot. It's hard to hit because Eris pads her chest. What? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm dropping all these the, these memes. Okay. Um. Um. I know Rezira had. It was a uh, oh, fuck. What was it? Um. One of the Amelia level one engines was kind of reminiscent of. What was her name? Fucking uh, Nita Minami? Was it kind of, yeah, kind of like Nita Minami? Yeah, you don't yeah, need yeah. to. Reverse. It's on. It's yeah. on attack. If you have three, three or more other uh, characters, then you uh, get to uh, look at the top four and add. Yeah. A character. I forgot what trade it was. Yeah. Not saying that that needs to go on the ban list by any means. By any means, or the imagination. But it's, they have a lot of good uh, overall effects. Is uh, a, the thing there. Yeah, the ones here, Amelia, is very comparable to uh, Puzzles, Puyo Puyo, which is a, a JP set. It has a one zero Maguro on a Stock Soul where you can attack into the top four thing. Mm-hmm. But what makes Amelia uh, probably better than the Maguro is that it can kill stuff, because on yeah. attack it gains 1k, and then with the book, 1k, so it's a 7k base attack mm-hmm. that you're going in for. So uh, it's just really solid because uh, you're able to look at top four, it's uh, your milling engine. Mm-hmm. Uh, it gets you a card, uh, and it's fat at the same time on your turn. So, yeah, it is. It's, it's it's help you get closer to your next refresh where you want to early drop your uh, three two rems or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, you said rewrite was another one. Um, what what would oh, be boy. the big card? Uh, you said rewrite was like another highly uh, big representation deck right now right no no i feel like i feel like um if they do hit rewrite i there's only one card that i can really think of that they would hit and that Mm -hmm. would be the three two katori just because it's like literally every jp deck i've seen like has has it splashed even in like guardians for for people want to like make good stuff or guardians like people Mm -hmm. will still splash it in and like there's also like the kkk build (laughs) no well i mean you don't run in guys but i'm sorry by uh (laughs) <laughs> like, I just uh-huh. It's just, I mean, rewrite. It, it's a good set. Like, no, no two ways about it. Uh, the Kotori, I'm still on the hunt uh, for those cards. I'm probably gonna wait it out a week to see if I actually want to get them because I'm not sure how the balance will go. But I'm, I'm crossing my fingers that rewrite won't, won't get hit because I think it's a very interesting set uh, with a lot of unique decks to build with a lot of really good cards. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, alongside the Kotori, if there was like a choose list, uh, I think like the next ones down will be like the three two Shizuru healer that also pay three discard one deal two look at top, uh, leave it on top or bottom, so it's like a defensive offensive scry in a way. It also heals and also deals damage, so it does like everything you po- would possibly want in a level three card. Um, and then. She's I'm of a belief that uh, the Guardian cards are the next strongest uh, like parts of the deck, but there's not a lot of green cards, and a lot of the best Guardian cards are in green. So I feel like if you would put like a choice list there, it would greatly restrict the deck building that you could do, especially because the set is already divided by name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if Just like plot, on, re- rewrite mm-hmm. stuff. To add on, like, if they really want to like hate like rewrite players, then they would add on... They would they would put uh, the original Akane on a restriction list just to like really hurt the consistency of all the mm-hmm. rewrite decks because it would hurt. Well, it wouldn't hurt KKK because it doesn't. KKK doesn't write, but it would hurt good stuff. It would hurt Guardians. It would hurt uh, Gaia. Okay. So they might do some dumb stuff. Like I honestly wouldn't put it past Bushiro to put three two Kotori early drop that minus the soul the three two Shizuru. Uh oh. Uh, you still hear me, Finley? Yeah, I think he said the three two uh, Shizuru. Yeah, I heard the three yeah, two Shizuru. I cut off for a bit. Sorry about that. You're cool, dude. Uh, so both three two blues Shizuru Kotori early drop, and then they can put like the one zero stock charger Shizuru uh, on like the same. Like cho- choose one of three, and that would effectively kill the deck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would kill the main important decks, which is Guardians or good stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, any of the other 
big sets that have come out as of recent. I know Komodo Friends is dropping later this week for JP. Um, so you, I don't even really know if that'll be that probably not going to be counted no, in. It's not. No, it's, it's not. not. <laughs> okay. It won't be so representation. It won't be gotcha. any Um, I think some. I don't think they're going to hit Vivid Strike just because it's that set just recently came out and like mm-hmm. it's about if you look at that set as a as a whole it's a very balanced set mm-hmm. like it's the way it's like designed like it does have like a really like kind of scary like early drop like if you don't deal with it then you effectively die mm-hmm. but like I feel like that's a that's like kind of your fault as a player if you don't like adjust to the meta where like you should expect people to play early drops mm-hmm. so you should like have some some like way to deal with a uh, removal some way to like deal with it or whatever mm-hmm. fair enough it's a better call so we were talking earlier about uh gochi Usa, and that's like the most likely candidate to be hit just mm-hmm. due to its sheer representation in jp so if we were to make a theoretical choose one of x list mm-hmm. uh, what would we put on that list that is between uh, <laughs> Well, I feel like the uh, I feel like if you put the the early drop healer on the list, that would definitely piss off a lot of JP players. But not a lot of English players. Yeah, not a lot of English players because some yeah some people are on the fence of like either rather running the burn one. Like I think it's on is it on play burn one? Or it's on it? play top check if it's. Rabbit House, I think burn one, and then it's like pay six burn five or something mm-hmm. done. Yeah. But you're yeah, you're gonna just to put more pressure um on your opponent. But I feel like even if the three two uh, early play healer got hit on the list, like the new, next list, people would just would go to the uh, the on play burn, uh top check burn one or whatever. Like, he would just would be, be like okay. <laughs> yeah, so, the thing with like uh rabbits from what I see is that like, uh, some builds are running both like, like they all. All rabbits build like the meta build is red blue and it has it has that three two like burn one burn one finisher, and but then like um some people splash in a mixture of like the burn one, on play burn one or the healer or whatever or some people just run just want to run the healer or they just want to run the burn one, um, which is understandable like it's just respectable, uh, I, I personally I would I would run the burn just on play burn one just like because i feel like you, i would rather be saving a lot of stock anyways to like play your like yeah. your there's finisher like, your, your premier finisher there's like two different play styles of the deck either they want to build up stock and not play the early drop or play the early drop and then build enough stock to do the combo like twice if i were to make a restriction list for the set i would probably follow in line with what Bushu has been doing recently and put on the of uh, the uh, 0015 uh, Cocoa uh, Clock uh, or the Salvage Ricky thing mm. uh, the 00 um, Rize uh, 2 5 oh. power that mills top 3 and then you can choose one, discard one and then the burner so it's kind of reminiscent of the CG ban list that uh, gives you a few utility level zeros and then a finisher and then you choose between those and which ones you want to use uh, and thinking about it, that restriction sounds absolutely devastating for the deck. Because mm-hmm. you, yeah. you lose your plus scene, you lose your milling, you lose your end, or you either lose your plus scene, lose your milling, or lose your end game. Because, uh, of course, you get to choose one. Okay. So, inter- uh, oh, yeah. be interesting Some predictions. Some people play there. the runner as well instead of like, the mill- Miller uh, milling card, I think. Mm-hmm. But, um,. Yeah, I agree with Greg that like that would that would hurt the deck. Um, gotcha. Quite substantially. The thing about uh, Gochi Yusa is that it's a very linear deck as well. <laughs> so like towards before like level two, level two or level three, or whatever you you're banking on your level one uh, Chino Shimakazes, right? And then you have like mm-hmm. your brainstormers that you want to like be brainstorming and like getting pluses off of those. And then you have your Rize clone, your Rize, the original Rizes. Uh, but from like what if from Greg's suggestions, I would probably pick the Rize just because like it's your your utility that you need. Okay. Or you could just stop playing rabbits. Like yeah, you could just stop. <laughs> um. Or like switch to green yellow or something because has better oh. characters in it anyway. Or oops. 
Oops. Yeah, I, I agree on that. <laughs> Dropping some waifu choices up in here. Yeah, how we how we do it? Um, waifu wars, YT. Oh wait, I'm based yeah. in. Yeah, right. <laughs> it it happens here too. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, um, I'm looking at like the other sets that like have been out like since this year. Uh, I don't think the thing with Sao and JP like it's fine. Like it's yeah, not scared. Like it's there's there's no reason to touch it. Konosuba is like whatever. It's not like scary um chain chronicle is man nah. like there's only one really good deck i think and that's like the yellow deck yeah what about kids niver <laughs> oh that that was a thing <laughs> sorry i forgot about it there for a second <laughs> you know, i actually really like his niver yeah. as a set but i know it's not good <laughs> yeah. um bang dream is fine like it's not scary uh love live eb like actually there's a lot of people in JP have been playing Love Live EB, but mm. I, it's not like worthy of like hitting, like because oh, yeah. it's not like over It's like not overwhelming, or it's not like really being represented in like the uh, results for like trios or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I think and then Star sure. Wars, it's yeah. You can't really hit Star Wars because I feel like the set. If you look at Star Wars as like the sets or like the colors and like the decks or whatever like there's nothing that's really overpressing like red is like kind of scary but then you realize that like they're banking on a lot of uh uh they have to like like it's mediocre like be- between like zero to before like you hit level two like the it's not that scary <laughs> like it's pretty straightforward and like mm-hmm. linear okay um, and then like so, like star wars is only limited to jp so i don't think they would hit it anyways yeah, I Fair mean, enough. main main things I want to point out. I agree with Bean Lee. Like, the main things that we're looking at here are uh, Gochusa. Mm-hmm. Um, we kind of put Rezero out of the question, but it still could happen because uh, JP players like that deck. And then rewrite. Mm-hmm. We're speculating, even mm-hmm. though it's not like the most represented set. It still has a lot of great cards that mm-hmm. a lot of players over here are scared of. Well, other than that. Uh, I feel like if they would have restricted to Love Rue, they would have done it a long time ago, so it's obviously not on the radar. Uh, and then a lot of other sets are just very fair composite sets, but aren't anything like broken or like anything mm-hmm. overly represented. So mm-hmm. those are the main things that we're looking at. And uh, ironically, it's a lot of the stuff that came out in like December, January of this year and last year. So yeah, um, understandable. Um, so- as far as the sets that they have currently before anything else is going to drop at this point, that's what we're basically going to be looking at for right now as far as our potential predictions, quote-unquote. Um, can't see the air quotes I'm throwing out there. Watch when we get it all wrong. <laughs> I know, right? That's, that's just kind of what I don't even care. Like This is just kind of us speculating and whatnot, but at the same time, if it... Well, y'all speculating more than me in any way, shape, or form. I mean, um, previously, like... There's been like ban lists where they don't even do anything at all. So yeah, so that that so, happened February 2016, I believe. Yeah, so they just didn't put anything there, and then yeah, they, they were just like here, it's as is type thing. And then and then recently we had the CG and uh, Monogatari purge, where two ban lists right after another, they would just limit more and more CG and Monogatari cards. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I can understand why. If this like this coming ban list, if they don't do anything at all, I can still like I'm okay with that just because I I I can see what people say like why not right now Weiss is like a pretty like healthier like fair game yeah um so. on that same note and we'll actually leave this as like the closing comments for um as far as another thing that me and uh, Bentley had uh, wanted to mention just real quick uh people's thoughts on whether English should have a ban list or not. Just, um, if y'all just wanted to touch it really quick, I personally don't want it to have a ban list, but this is also coming from a bias of having dealt with co-money with the Yu-Gi-Oh! ban list and whatnot before, sets rotating and MTG and whatnot. I like having everything there. Even if stuff gets errated, I personally don't want one. What are y'all's opinions? The way okay, the way that English works, right? Oh, uh, if people don't know and haven't played English, the way mm-hmm. like when we receive cards from like uh, JP yeah, sets, or it's, whatever, it's like, yeah, they they already like they, they know what cards we're gonna get in okay. there. They're gonna like 
Not like we don't get errata the after, but it's whatever. Uh. Um, I feel like if there were to be a ban list, it even if there were to be a ban list, it'd be really hard to like hit anything because the only thing I would really hit, I would hit just based fairly off of representation is SAO because it's like yeah. Ever since we edit spin out, it's been like in every almost like every single regional at least in the top eight mm -hmm. cut. Um, but I mean, the thing is, I don't know what to hit in SAL as well because because uh, if you hit like something as like the one zero second Yuki, that's gonna like uh, I feel like it would piss off a lot of people. Um, Overtly, it, kinda, it would hurt like the cons consistency of the deck. I mean, you could. J, uh, SAO players can go can go back to like the one zero uh, Asana saying. invites to the party. It's not as good as I wouldn't even do uh, that. I would go to the freaking um the, the I would go to the freaking new Asana at that point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> inherited sword skill. I would prefer that over the. I mean, nothing wrong with Star Splash. Don't get me wrong, but comparatively, even then, it's just like you hit Yuki and it's like, okay, I'm just gonna go play something else. <laughs> yeah. You know, this, this, if like, that were the mindset at the, that time, that would be how I would do it. Just, and, like, you can't, like, you can't say, oh, let's hit uh, Sinon and let's hit, like, the 3 2 Asana, because then obviously people are going to pick one over yeah. the other. Anyways. It's, yeah. Pick one, okay, well, that would happen anyway. So. Yeah, and if you, if you hit solely the Asana, then, like, that's kind of, like, yeah. really hard on the deck in general. Like, yeah. people just it will gravitate towards Sinon, anyways, if that was it. Derail this real quick, but I just want to talk about uh, the current like deck state in English right now because uh, I feel like the de the desi the divide between sets is way too big for them to really consider a ban list because the way I see it is there's a bunch of like casual or like bad or not as good sets that go under a certain like category, and then there's like the five or six good decks that can compete in English, say yeah. uh, Kantai, Sword Art, Love Live. Uh, soon to be Konosuba, soon to be Persona Five. Yeah, uh, I think if, I missed something in there, but if we ever get P Five, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, I mean, think that like the reason why people like like want, wanted a ban list, I feel like at the time was when English when um Kantai came out, people were like saying, "Oh, Hibiki, Hatsukaze, Akagi, all in the same yeah. deck is scary, like is so oppressive." Yeah. And it's kind of like I'll agree, it is like it's oppressive, like, sure. But even but then, then you like, don't see it top that much anymore. Yeah, if you look at the results, like it, it's not dominating. Yeah. like English as people like claim or like are scared of it. As of the recording of this, um, August 2017, I think there was only one or two Kantai decks that even topped in the past couple tournaments that have gone on. And it's like, uh, otherwise, like you said, it's it's Sao. So yeah. it, it's it's like Sao amongst other shenanigans of stuff, and it's like okay. So and I feel like if you even if we did do the old um, JP restriction of like Hibiki, Hatsukaze, and Akagi Kai, uh, I feel like most people will obviously gravitate towards Hibiki because anti heal yeah. is pretty uh, sh strong. Um, anti anti salvage is whatever. It's like it's either you're lucky yeah. and the opponent's running like gate triggers, or it doesn't really matter. Yeah. And like, not saying it hasn't like, won me games, but yeah, yeah, Akagi's uh, good. But then like, there's other other ways to like, you still run Musashi's and you can just splash yeah. something else like as another finisher or whatever. Yeah. But I feel like if you if you do those restrictions for English, it it really hurts the deck for Kantai. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, there's only two sets for Kantai, and like so, uh, just to back, back like to reiterate again, like Kantai isn't yeah. Yeah. like dominating the English scene. Yeah, so at this point, it's also, what would you even type of hit uh, hit thing? So so as far as yes or no to English ban list from me is no, Benly, yay or nay? I'm I'm personally no, no? just because like, okay. it wouldn't make sense. Like, if Fair they enough. wanted to do one, they would have done one by now. Fair enough. And Greg, yeah. your opinion on that? Uh, yeah, I don't, I'm in the same camp. I don't think anything in English really needs to be banned. Okay. Mainly just because of the point I mentioned before, because yeah. there's like a clear divide in the sets, and if you mm -hmm. want to play a competitive deck, you'll play a competitive deck. If mm -hmm. you don't want to play a competitive deck, enjoy the game. You know. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, if we're going solely like based on like representation, like how JP does their representation, you you have to like look at uh, for English. Love Live is represented a lot, but I don't think it's worthy of getting hit. 
like if there was an English yeah. band, this. So. Yeah. Okay. Um. But it seems to be a unanimous no across the board here. So our panel <laughs> of judges have decided there will be no ban list. Um, That's fuck, right. fuck you, Co Money. What? <laughs> uh, anyway, um, with that, uh, if there's any other quick closing thoughts, go ahead. But other than that, we'll go ahead and sign off here in a sec. Mm, um, good. Unrestrict LB rest. I've been waiting <laughs> so long. <laughs> There you go. Uh, I want my um, my oh, I I would like Bushira to do more power ups because we we were supposed to get one in spring, but we never got one for GP. What were we supposed to get? Uh, well, last well with power up sets they yeah they do it biannually, so they do one in spring and then they do one in uh, uh <gasps> winter time. Okay, so they hadn't like they did they specifically say a set. No, okay, no, okay. it's just we, we totally, they completely ignored it. We just, like, skipped out on it. Oh, okay. That's right. Yeah, right. I want a Black Rock Shooter power upset. There you go. Yeah, it's like Oka Basara. Guilty yeah, Crown power upset? What? No, it's just... Anyway. Uh, okay, so with that, we'll go ahead and be signing off here. Um, this is base damage. We got Waifu Wars, and we got Greg. Uh, thank y'all very much for being on the show. It's been very much appreciated. Um, hopefully have you again uh, at some point again, Greg. Uh, I need to add you on Skype after this. Uh, thank you. <laughs> absolutely. Um, and thank you once again, Bentley. Um, thank uh, you for having me. Uh, and thank you to your mother for giving birth to you. Um, <laughs> this is... <laughs> and my father for helping. There you go. Yeah, for helping. <laughs> Sorry. Um, for supplying the necessary... Let me just stop right there. <laughs> it's like, well, let's see where this is going. This is, yeah, no. <laughs> All right. Uh, but that is it for now. We will see y'all on the flip side. Peace. See ya.